Hey folks, I'm here with Bill Durboro and his Jackson Bick rig. We are going to do the install of the Ultralight 1103 AC. So that'll be, it, it's a you know, three horsepower equivalent electric motor is really happy on a bigger boat and this is a bigger boat. So let's take a, uh, you, now you had the, uh, the 403 on this before, Four right? Three, yes. Yep. Okay. So you're just upgrading from the one to the three horsepower. Yes. And uh, show us the this foot control steering setup you've done that, that actually works with the uh, the pedal drive. You got the pedal drive there. Yeah, I got the, so this is actually the new flex drive unit. So um, just got these from Select Designs and just installed those. And I had to cut these in order to give me a clearance for when I do have my pedal unit. Right, and it works works really well. And of course, run my cable to the end underneath the insert. Okay, and that's coming out back here. That's coming all the way back out. Okay, so I've grabbed. This is actually a piece that that I had on the on the back of a different boat just to to get the motor a little bit higher. We were playing around with this, saying, "Hey, with this with this here." That low angle where that that motor lift ring is, uh, it kind of leads, you know, square into that, and you have something to ride up and over. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use this shim that I've made out of starboard, and we may make some others, uh, but we're just trying to elevate the motor a little bit, and then we're going to use a Yamatech tie down eyelet in this uh, this mighty mount. This Mighty Mount XL, we're just going to put it on this hatch and uh, see how that all lines up. And if we have to make adjustments, we may make more of those. I've made these before. You know, you just order this, this material online. I've seen people do it with cutting boards um, that they buy at Walmart. But I or you can order the, uh, the Starboard or I forget what the, the acronym, HD something or other, whatever. It's... it's it's vinyl um, you know just using the sawzall or a coping saw you know you can you can make your own and drill holes in it get some longer bolts in there and you can elevate that so all right um, I guess the first step Bill if you want to just go ahead and, and you can install the the mighty mount XL and I'll um, I'll line up our hardware for this and we'll see how that lines up while Bill's working on the, the Mighty Mount, we're going to go over the, the parts here that come with the, um, the Ultralight 1103AC. Um, these bolts are made for if you're drilling, you know, there, if there are no threaded inserts like we have, threaded brass inserts in the boat, if, if you got nothing back there but you got a flat space, um, these bolts are made for that. You drill holes and you got nice big beefy bolts and washers. Um, these are actually the right length to go through the mount and have enough, you know, enough thread coming out there uh, to grab in the existing bolts. And we could put it on directly like that, um, but I've actually found some slightly longer bolts that we're gonna use so I can utilize my shim. Um, these are for the the bottom of the the throttle, and he's already got his Yak Attack uh, Torquedo throttle mount there ready. Uh, but they're that's what those are for. Uh, the cleat. This is part of the motor lift apparatus, and this U-shaped plate is part of the motor lift, and they both go into track with these screws here. These will thread into these little these little discs and it it'll tell you which side is up top uh, and then you got four different um, four different little carabiners one of which goes on the top of your motor lift bar here uh, these are your pull stops for the um, you know for your motor lift and the other ones for the the reverse lock and this is the the cord that you use for that uh, we got some extra Yak Attack tie down eyelets we're putting on the sides here just to guide this this cord from wherever he has it up here 
head into the back. Uh, and then the, the grip paste here, we'll get into this a little bit later. This is so that when you have the steering triangle on the pipe, that it's able to, to fully grab this without twisting. Bill's got the, the Mighty Mount on there. They're a tight fit. I don't know that we wouldn't, won't be able to run everything through the one, um, through that single loop. Um, I, again, this is just to get it to clear the back where back of this so you don't have something rubbing on its way to this. We're gonna maybe not even use that. Um, the other reason why you use a, a shim and why you would make one is that you know with with certain boats and, and I found this to be the case with a it was a Hobie Outback um, because it was fairly low in the back a lot of this was dragging in the bottom so we're elevating it to keep the water resistance off the bottom of this just to to get it a little bit higher all right so here's the configuration we've decided on uh, we're gonna have our pivot point here above this lock cam Then we're going to do our steering triangle. So that it will be sitting above the pivot instead of below. It's going to be probably about right there. And then our lift arm. will be here at the top. And once we get that all assembled on here, the rock guard from Trey Leach over here at Innovative Sportsman, let's just snap on the place right here with our grass cutter and our rock guard prongs. And it should make for a pretty seamless install. So Bill's putting that, that steering for the, um, the motor lift as high as he can on that. Uh, reason for that, the higher the, this ring clamp is on there, uh, the easier it's going to be to to lift the motor. You know, it just, it, it in essence makes it a longer lever when it's positioned up here. Uh, you can combine the motor lift arm with the, the steering triangle if you have a boat that needs the, the, the whole propeller set very low or but in, in this case, you know, we've looked at the water line. You can see see that mud line there. We follow that back and we we actually stuck my motor on there to, to look at it and you know we've raised it a little bit and I think it's gonna be it's gonna be okay you know with this setting this setup here with regard to how deep the motor is. This is the point where you use this stuff the uh, carbon assembly paste I could call it the grip paste but so tear that sucker open and you're going to slather a little bit of that on the pipe. We're going to lift this up. I want you to slather a little bit of it right around there. Mm -hmm. It's just this pink goo. And when this slides down, it helps it grab its gritty like rubbing compound. It feels like sand, mm -hmm. like really fine sand. You don't need much. Okay. Just That'll work. We're going to seat that down there. We're going to make sure that this is centered, and you can you can go ahead and tighten those. Um, I will tell you, you can use the the quick release hardware on this, but I prefer the you know this traditional metric hardware that actually comes on on this ring clamp that holds the profile in place just I feel like it gets a stronger grab on there so let's look down and make sure that's straight before you go all the way so we're gonna kick that out loosen it a little bit and just you, you may want to pull it down and kind of get it between your legs and, and if you look down on it you're actually not that far off but I would push this side that way 
Right, we're going to get it in place and see where we're at as far as meeting where the water line is on our propeller. See if we're low enough or we're too high or where we're at with everything. Okay, so you can see his mud line here and you can see that that propeller is below it by how many inches do you say that is? Ten? Eight to ten? I don't think it's quite that much, but it's plenty. This this particular prop is very good at not ventilating, so you're plenty deep enough. Um, I would say if you wanted to, just for the shallow running that you do on rivers, you could go ahead and eat up this you know this little bit to get it higher you want these as high as they they can possibly be mm -hmm. um, without without ventilating the prop so i think because we we added that shim uh to make things work better up here we've raised it and i think i think we want to slide the steering triangle down and and eat up this amount here so all we're doing Loosening this, and I think we got enough of the grip paste on the inside of that sucker, it, it'll be fine. Um, all we're doing is just sliding that down to eat up some of that, that depth so that this propeller, and really, so the bottom of the skeg is a little bit higher because, Bill, you want to run as shallow as possible on a river, right? Yes. That's the idea. <laughs> So, all right, center that and retighten it, and we'll be good to go. What we're doing here is I got a stick that I'm lining up, and I'm really matching that, that water line. I'll come right up to it, and you can see that that propeller is well underneath the surface. If, this, if that was the top of a 403 propeller, that's about right. You got about four inches. But this propeller, and even the weedless version, is really good at, um, at going, you know, coming very close to the surface without slurping. Um, that being said, I think we could eat up about two, maybe two and a half inches of the length, but this profile, being as tall as it is, keeps us from going any higher. So, Bill, you're, you're behind the camera filming this. You, do you want to chop this with the, ba the bandsaw? I mean, we can, we can get this higher for your river fishing where your, your skeg and the rock guard we're going to put on it aren't hitting it as much, and you can continue going in shallow water. Let's you cut want to do that? Let's cut it. All right. All right, so I'm taking off each, each piece, and we'll get it back on there. But we got to get them off the off the pylon, off the cable. So but this profile is going to come up. So we're just going to take the profile over. And let me say this much: if, if you're fishing salt water or lakes or, or a place where you want it deep enough so that when it's pitching and rolling over over wake or, or wind driven waves you want it deep but this specific application bill is going to be using fishing the river uh you really want it as shallow as possible and and this is limiting that so we're going to chop about two inches off so that he's able to keep going super shallow so all right i got it in there chopped take this to the grinder and just knock those burrs off we'll get rid of this piece and we'll be ready to keep going with that install so we're taking that maybe a little bit more than two inches but not by much two inches off 
uh, he's you know, Bill's going to be able to to run two inches shallow of water. You know, so with that that mud line showing the water line there, um, that's a good level. That's that's a good level there, even for some lake fishing with a little bit of chopping the the wind. And instead of the you know instead of the snag hitting bottom here he's able to go a little bit shallower and in river fishing it's it's important so feel feel free to chop that if it makes sense for the type of fishing that you do all right ready to install the rock guard here i've already taken this apart just two screws here this is going to be a very snug fit pop in place like so All right, now we're gonna do our motor lift line here. And starting off with a cam cleat here, which will lock this in place. Up to this, which will help us pull the motor a lot easier. Back to an eye here, and also an eye here. And then we installed this eye in place of this down here because of how sunken down this is, which is just gonna rub and it's gonna add more restriction for pulling the motor. So, put it on our lift here. We're gonna take our line, thread it through, down through this. And we're just gonna tie a knot. So Bill's already got some uh, some carabiners on there, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and you know just add a link because I know these you, you actually get four carabiners. They go one goes to the reverse lock for a quick release, one goes up here to the top of the motor lift, and the other two go to the steering triangle. So we're we're just gonna connect those to the existing ones he has. Um, he has the um, the, the steel cable and we're gonna see if these these lines are of, of uh, appropriate length hopefully they are I know that you can adjust with the select design foot pegs you can adjust the the leg length that way with just taking these and you pinch it and they slide closer or, or further away so that's handy for that uh, if they're they're not good the other option for this instead of using the steel cable is what comes with the innovative sportsman um foot control steering kit uh, that you can install here you could actually put them up on the rails here the same way i've done recently with a um i've done it on a new canoe i've done it on my uh my jackson u-pick i've done it on an old town predator putting them on the existing rails instead of on the side it actually gets it a little bit wider which is good um, but the spectra cord is some really great stuff and i think wilderness systems make steering kits with them bonafide makes steering kits with them and, and innovative sportsmen so 
that Spectre cord is really nice stuff. But I think as he has it set up, uh, Bill's got a good rig here. Let's take a look at that steering rotation. Uh, the steering rotation is limited by the pins where the, the steering triangle, that little plastic piece in the front, it limits it just as a safety feature there. So he's going to want to leave those on there, but we got real good steering rotation and uh, I think he's got a real nice rig. One last thing to do and uh, I'm going to leave, leave that for Bill to take care of. Um, he's, he's already got the, the Yak Attack torpedo throttle mount, is just put that on there and that actually comes with the, um, the right size metric um, hardware and uh, then he'll be ready to go. So we'll get it on, this, on the water this weekend. I know we're having some rough weather coming. So I don't know that we're going to get speed and range done because um, I like to do that on a lake when it's not a windy day and we're going to have 30 mile an hour wind tomorrow. So probably won't get speed and range um, tomorrow, but we'll get it on a different trip. But it's been a pretty, pretty good install. I think you got a nice rig here, Bill. All right, we're getting ready to launch here. I got Bill's big rig here and I brought an Attac 140. And we're getting ready to launch in the creek. You ever been up this way? Not this well. Yeah, just not this stretch. Yeah. So this is a creek that flows into the the upper Juniata River, and we're gonna just. It's not posted, so I think we're we're good. I've not used this access before. But we're just going to drop right down there and then there's a, you know, probably a half mile down is, is the river. So we're going to put in here, um, fish this, and then move up the river, uh, probably covering as much as, you know, three, three and a half miles upstream. Um, there's some good, good structure up that way and I've done well on the river. I've just not accessed here. So we're going to get these boats and all the gear down there and start fishing see how this uh, see how this install did all right so we're in and uh, we had a very slippery bank there and it is May 9th and we got snow flurries here in Pennsylvania it shouldn't be it didn't take you long bill Currency. Little guy. Let's start. That is a, the response is the biggest thing I'm noticing. There's just no delay whatsoever. I mean, it's instantaneous, and you don't. You don't hear it kick in either, so you almost have to just nudge it a little bit just to see that you are engaged because you don't even realize it. It's just so quiet. But it just, it'll sit you back in your seat. I mean, it lifts the nose up way more than the 403. It just really turns. It's, it's very similar. I mean, I haven't got it in really skinny water, but I had it pretty shallow and it didn't drag at all. So I'd say we've pretty much got it down in the right height. So we're a quarter mile down the creek, almost creek mouth is right there. And I forgot to start my, my angler app. Uh, I'm a, go ahead and start this log from right here we're gonna title this Juniata and it's May 9th saving it and start I got this one here, it's about 16 inches right at. 
uh, slack water on a Indiana blade spinner bait that I made myself. Dang, gold spinner bait. Nice, man. How big? Uh, it's probably 16 and a half. Nice fish. We got some deep enough water here that allow me to try out my pedal drive in conjunction with the Torquedo. Just to make sure I'm going to have clearance and I have no issues and things be working pretty well. gloves on, hand warm the package on the back. And we're like three weeks away from June. This is absurd. There it is. Finally got one on the finesse jig, just tumbling it along on the bottom. Little guy, but it's a start. So uh, the big one. It's a nice fish, though. Mm. All right, it's starting to pick them up here and there. Finesse jigging. That's weird. Snow squall one minute, sunshine the next. Through line eddy. Let's see. Starting to pick up. I got my new catch board here. See what this one is. He whacked it hard, the finesse jig, right on the current seam. This one's 15 and a half. Nice looking fish. I bet you there's others in that that hole. I'll go ahead and get a quick pick for for angler for the trip log. that around. Alright. Right. Use photo. Alright, we'll let him go. We'll see ya. Alright. Filled up a bag. Cleaned up the river. Got all kinds of goodies, mostly beer cans and soda bottles, and I got a couple golf balls and got a comb. All kinds of stuff. Alright. Barge is leaving. Well, we're back to this. I think Mother Nature's just angry. It's getting windy, windier. So we made it up to the bridges, which was our goal, and I think Bill's already got one in the eddy over there. And I still have 35% of the battery left. So we've budgeted well. I, I got enough power to keep fishing, you know, all the little eddies on the way back down. I'll be curious to know how many miles we went up. I think it's somewhere in the range of See. <laughs> I pulled up 
catch up with Bill. He's like, yeah, they're right there on that current scene. Drop a jig in. There he is. There's some too. This is a good example of why it's good to have the NRS pilot. You know, you gotta have a knife to be able to cut your anchor line if you need to, if you get stuck in a bad place, but certainly it helps to cut fishing line when you drift under it as well. So we're leaving the bridges behind. We're heading back downstream, which shouldn't take too long. Uh, as high as the flow is, you know, this three and a half mile trip is going to be a quick one. All right down to about 10% on the battery. So we'll cut loose a little bit, see what it can do. Pull the motor up for this this riffle here, but I just got really shallow. I mean, I was in that much water, which for the 1103, I'm pretty happy being able to operate that shallow like that. That is very cool. <laughs> That's a better fish. That's when you put the net on. Flip it underneath a big piece of wood on the shoreline. And <laughs> that's why we come up here. Pretty fish on the micro finesse jig. Let's get a measurement. Coming up on a nice little ledge drop here. I'll go ahead, get that motor up, and we will speed up and mash through it. Be a little rapid. All right, drop it back down. Off we go. Good trip. I'm gonna take a look and see how long it is. We'll go ahead and hit stop now. We're heading back up the creek. I can see the truck. And um, wow, we did 8.4 miles. So we went, you know, roughly four miles up and then floated back down and had plenty of energy to spare. It's a good day. Really glad to see that um, the, the modification we did to the 
um, the profile to get that motor up a little bit has really worked out in, in shallow river fishing. This river is certainly up a, a good bit, but um, you know, we, we took it through some pretty skinny water and uh, that, that modification proved itself to be a, a good one. So I'm glad that we, we did it and I'm glad that uh, Bill's got a really nice rig to, uh, to river fish with, with the 1103.